Hi there, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to my daughter's closet. <laughs> so today's um, newsletter is all about organizing a closet, and um, it is going to be a high-level view for you because that can get real tricky. Um, the first thing that you think about is obviously your space, but it's the person. So this is for my daughter, and um, when I organize for her and with her, um, it helps her appreciate the things she has, understand that things are just things and they can get thrown away or given away. So there are um, a lot of lessons that come with organizing, whether I do it on my own, which I am doing today, or if I do it with her. But regardless, I will give her a small tour of what we of I of what I did today in for her in her closet and why I did what I did. So a lot of it has to do with appreciating what she has and also how to utilize what it is that she has efficiently and effectively. Okay, so let's get started. Um, clothes are always the big thing, right? Closets, clothes. So how I do it is I definitely segment it. Let me flip you around here. Okay, so what I do is I put it in different type of um, categories. Over here, I have memory. These are items that we do not want to get rid of yet that I still want to keep around. Some dance costumes, um, some things from previous birthdays, sports, and events. Then I go over here into this small section. This is a um, waiting. I go over here into this small section. And these are items. These are like T-shirts that are very seasonal and some spirit wear. So she's not going to wear her shamrock shirts come to March. And they don't need to take up space in the in the drawers. So hang them up. Have them accessible because those months you don't come flying around. We also hang up different sports ones. Like here's her Red Wings one. And a lot of times the schools will have a sports day. So that's what um, we have those items very handy. Next, I went into kind of like fashion jackets and sweaters that um, she doesn't wear all the time, but uses to accessorize. And I have recently become pretty big in hanging up shirts that I know we wear for um, church and also that we wear for kind of fancier outfits. Say she's invited with me to a bridal shower or a baby shower or just some sort of event where we don't want the t-shirt to get pulled out of the drawer that most likely got crumpled in. So this is what where we hang up here. And I have them sorted by long sleeve and short sleeve. Then I go into those pants, same reasoning, usually ch church type of pants. And same with the jumpers are then organized as well. Next, I go into her dresses. The first thing I did with dresses was I put the very seasonal ones over to the far side of the closet, the least accessible area. But those spring dresses, the sleeve sleeveless ones, the ones that I know, even with a little jacket such as this, she's not going to wear. Like this is just, she's just not going to wear this until it's um, spring or summertime. So I have that over there. And then I kind of work back. Then I put the super fancies. I don't even know if this will be worn. There may be an occasion, may not, that she will need to wear a dress like that. But it's accessible and just in case, like say a daddy-daughter dance or something, these things are accessible and ready. Then I also put skirts. Please keep in mind when you're using skirts, this type of hanger right there. Those are great. You will get multiple outfits on one um or multiple skirts on one type of hanger. I'll, and then again, I just went with her dresses that she can use for church, kind of more everyday type of dresses. And that was the big categories that I did. I also have her uniform. A lot of it's not here because a lot of it's being washed right now, but her uniforms, which she wears every day, will go directly in the same spot. They all get grouped together. And so I have all that handy for her. That is um, my main way... <laughs> That was a lot of talking, a lot of information at once, but that's my main way that I organize um, my nine-year-old's clothes. So that's how I like to do it, is I really like to categorize it, think about it. I know her well. I know what she will and will not wear. Now, prior to this personal closet organization, we went through a bunch of clothes and did an honest look like, are you going to wear this? Take a good look. Is this your style? Are you not going to? Are you going to? Because if you're not, I want to either save it for the youngest or I want to give it to somebody that else that's going to wear it. There are a lot of people that need clothes, including our, fam you know, our family, right? We love hand-me-downs. So we went through a whole bunch and we were took an honest look at it. And so that's why the closet doesn't feel overwhelmed with clothes. I'm going to turn it around. Um, it doesn't feel overwhelmed in here. It feels like a good amount. So 
I feel really comfortable with that. Like she has plenty to wear on for several different occasions. And these are just the hangups, right? It doesn't include the folded in the drawer type of clothing. So think about it. I pulled several things from her drawers because I wanted them to be hung up, singled out, not something that she's going to pull out right after school to tumble around in the backyard with, right? So th th those were decisions that were purposefully made and then hung up. As far as clothes go, also I'm going to turn it around. I have a pile of clothes that for her school that I know she will be wearing soon, just not yet, but it's in waiting. It's not a lot and it's out of the way. And I also, she did not have a lot of summer that we ended up saving for her specifically that we know that she will continue to be able to use next year, hopefully. And so we put it in a small bin and I labeled it for her. And then um, I put it up there. I even put sandals up there that she won't most likely be wearing, but if she so chooses this in this October to wear them, she can grab them easily. And then tights. She's not a big tight wearer, but when she does, she, they're clearly labeled. She knows where they're at. She just grabs her step stool. And then last but not least, hats. She does not um, have a ton of hats, but we got a little section for her hats right there as well. So that is the clothing portion of the closet that I wanted to share with you as far as organization goes. Now that we've got that out of the way, the clothing part, a big part is get the trash out. Get the trash out. Know what's trash. The project that used to be really important that got crumpled and is now um, on the floor and just, you know, not important anymore, but was really important. It's not important anymore. So throw it away. <laughs> get the trash out. Get community toys out. Community toys. Those are those toys that are purchased for the whole family that are supposed to be kind of be in the community area. For instance, a life game. That life game is something that was part of the whole family and that went back with our board games that we keep in the community area for the family to use. If there is a game that is very personal that was just specifically for one child, you can keep that in their closet and all the kids know that they have to say, Jen, can I use this game? You know, they have to ask permission for that first. So anyway, that those are two big things to that will help you clear out your closet. The trash and figure out what toys belong or don't belong to that person and put them in their perspective spots. We'll have that person put them away in the community area in the perspective spots. But you will know then what, um, what you're dealing with there. So that will clear out a lot. What I keep in here then is very discerning. So I'm going to flip this around again and show you. Okay, so this is a project. This is something that I wouldn't be like something I normally would keep, but she has played with it. I've witnessed her playing with this, and it's just something I know she enjoys doing. So I keep it there for her. And then over here, um, the magic kit. This is going to be given new life. I know she enjoys using magic, but sometimes when it's put away in such a tidy manner where it's unacceptable or accessible in a box, people, it's not as fun. So take it out, put it so that they can see it. It's still nice and tidy and in there and boxed up, but it also says, come play with me. And then again, there is a craft there that I know she plays with. Again, personally, not something I would think to keep, but I know my daughter and I know she loves it. So this is kept and this can be moved. We use these cute little bins and we just have more crafts that are her personal crafts that have made it past the cut in the closet. And then I also keep her laundry bin right in the closet. Okay. That again was a lot of information. A quick breakdown. Know your person, know what they play with and what they don't play with. And if there are toys that they can get rid of that do not belong in the community area of your home, then get rid of them and give them to somebody else that could use those toys for their children. Um, repurpose, um, redisplay those toys that they love. Give them that brand new life. Just by switching the location of this little box right here, this one right here, she will continue to play with again. Just by having these magic items out and looking ready to play with, they will be played with. And then she will feel so proud and happy that a little creation of hers that she just loves to play is ready to go. So think about what who your person is. 
So basically, in all those aspects, you get a chance to really just think about your person. Like my daughter has been on my mind for this, what, it's taken me an hour and a half, I think, to do all this. So maybe, maybe that amount of time. So that is a quick, quick closet cleanup. And then these are the extraneous items that I wanted to show you as well. We have memory things. These are like tidbits and memories that eventually I will need to go through because now it's getting pretty big. And I'm not sure I'm going to need all those binders worth of things. But right now they were items that were purposely selected that, yes, we want to keep these throughout the year. And that's what this bin is too. So now there's two bins. And these eventually will have to get through, gone through. And over here, sleeping bag. And I also have her like a oh, little overnight type of bag right next to it, just so it's handy. Again, we're not, oh, a quick sleepover, blah, blah, blah. We're not worried about um, trying to find it. Those are the main items. Like we've got a little decorative. She puts up her decorative. She had this all really nice right here. I love that we have accessible drawstring bags handy. So it's just, um, it wasn't a tough task, but it was one of those that's been really refreshed. Here's a little bit of the pile of just some of the stuff. That's just some of it, and I'm going to bring you over as I talk to you. And over here is another pile. So, yes, it is a process. All these things right here are going to get placed in other places where they will actually get used. We're going to create a sewing area for the sewing machine. There's a workout area we already have. There's different... Um, there's different folders and whatnot that are going to get repurposed and they're not going to be placed in Genevieve's room. They're going to get stored with our office supplies. There's lots that you need to think about when you organize up somebody's space. But the good thing is, is that you have refreshed it. So I'm going to give you a nice little view here. Isn't that nice? It's inviting. She has this really big space that she's blessed with. And now it's sort of inviting and easy for her to find her things. Okay, that is it. I just wanted to share a quick um, closet organization with you and um, show you that these things are so very doable. Very doable. Just break it down by steps. Trash out. Toys out, thought about, replaced, given away, closed, organized by matching up, putting them same with the same t-shirts with t-shirts and pants with pants, making that easy, bins work. I didn't purchase anything new today to put in her closet. I just found things around the house that were good extra bins. And my label maker is going to get into use. I'm going to label it magic for her because she's going to love that box with magic on it. And it's fun. You know, she's a reader. Let her read the labels. And I will know she will put her magic stuff back in the magic box. All right. Have a great day. Bye, y'all.